I got a little froggy in my throat. Oh, there's a frog in my throat. There's a frog in my throat. All right. Today, I'm going to show you my top five favorite things to do with one of these guys, a Wacom tablet. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nays. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we are showing off one of my favorite pieces of hardware for working in Photoshop. This is a Wacom tablet. You probably seen me work on one of these for pretty much ever. Basically, you get a little pen here and this guy introduces pressure sensitivity into working with Photoshop. Whereas a mouse, you just kind of click it on or off. This, the harder you press, you can create different effects in Photoshop. In this video, we're going to show you how to make rain, how to make snow, how to dodge and burn, even how to do frequency separation retouching, and how to remove objects. Not only that, but we're going to be providing you with custom brushes that we're making in this tutorial. To download them, just click boop, right up there or follow the link in the description down below. So we're starting with my first effect, rain. So here in Photoshop, let's create a new layer. Now we're starting off with a standard brush, nothing fancy going on here. We're gonna go to a window and over to our brush settings. Now here in our brush settings, we're gonna start with our brush tip shape. We're gonna bring our angle, there we go, down to 90% and our roundness to 2%. You know what, let's go ahead and bring our angle a tiny bit to the side. So we got a kind of a side falling rain and we're gonna bring our spacing all the way up to 1000%. Now you can see basically this is what my brush looks like. I need to scatter it around to make it look more random. So there we have our scattering. Let's go ahead and turn this on. I'm going to click on both axes and bring that all the way up to a thousand percent again. And now we're starting to look a little bit more rain, but we don't have any variation in the size of this rain. This is where the Wacom tablet comes in. We're going to turn on our shape dynamics. Let's go here and make sure that our control is set to pen pressure. We're gonna bring our minimum diameter down. Now let's zoom in to show you what this actually does. If I don't press hard, you're gonna see I'm making smaller rain. But as I start pressing harder and harder, my rain is getting a little bit larger and I can go back to not pressing hard again. So I haven't changed anything about the brush. I'm simply pressing harder on my tablet to make the larger rain. Very, very cool. What this allows me to do and we're pretty much done, by the way. We're going to save this brush out at the end of the episode and give it to you. Just follow the link right down below to download it. Now I can just press lightly back in the background here. You know, this rain is going to be a little bit further away, right? So we're just going to press lightly over here in the background. All right, there we go. Press a little bit harder here in the foreground. Okay, there we go. And then here in our main foreground, we're going to press even harder and we're gonna make some larger rain here in the foreground. There we go, and it's just a bunch of small rain in the background. Super, super easy to make this rain effect, looking really, really good. Now, all I need to do here at the end is just add a little bit of a blur. We're gonna to go to filter, down to blur, and I'm gonna pop in a little bit of a motion blur. There we go, let's give it just a little bit of a motion blur. You can change your distance, and there we go. You can see we have a really cool realistic rain effect. Now, my personal suggestion is to lower your opacity a little bit and then do this in a couple of layers. Also, you'll just want to use a layer mask because in some places it's going to look nice and realistic, but you won't have light colored rain over dark areas. Okay, so some of these areas you'll want to just go ahead and make sure you mask it out because it's going to look a lot more realistic if you make it invisible over the dark areas. There we go. And just visible over the light areas and you can just have it be visible or not visible in front of your subjects as well. Fantastic. We're almost done. We're gonna make one more new layer, make some large rain and then blur to the foreground. So we got a new layer here. Let's make some large rain right here in the foreground. We're gonna to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. This time we just want a nice big blur in the rain in the foreground. There we go. Looking fantastic. Lower the opacity and there we have it. So our rain effect is complete. So you can see how the Wacom tablet helped us to make the rain look more realistic by being able to create larger or smaller raindrops based on pen pressure. Now we're moving to object removal. In this case, I just wanna highlight my main surfer here while removing everyone else. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. We're gonna use our spot healing brush tool 
And I'm gonna zoom in. Now we're gonna choose a very large brush here, but based on how hard I press, I can actually just remove either just a portion of my large brush, or I can press harder and remove more of an area. So I don't have to change my brush size at all to remove various different sized elements from my photo. For instance, if I just wanna remove this small area, I simply don't press hard, but you can see the outline of my brush is still quite large. Not a big deal though, because I'm simply not pressing hard, but here I'm gonna press a bit harder and we're gonna remove a larger area. Very, very easy. Let's go ahead and remove that. A Little bit of a larger area here, just simply press harder and you can remove more area at the same time. There we go. For smaller things, simply don't press as hard. And there we have it. So you can see in just a couple of seconds, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm just gonna use a large brush. Boop, pop, beep. Heel brush it out. And there we have just our subject. <gasps> ah, no one waiting for the waves. So in this case, pressure sensitivity allowed me to make my brush larger and smaller to remove different size objects quickly without ever changing the brush size in Photoshop. Now we're moving into dodging and burning. So we're gonna start this off by creating a curves adjustment layer. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit brighter. Now, if I just paint with a standard brush, let's invert that. You can see my standard brush in this case is just gonna apply 100% of this brightening effect. I really don't have any variation and it's not gonna look realistic. It's just on or off. So we're gonna go into our brush settings and turn on transfer. Here where it says flow jitter, we're gonna turn the control to pen pressure. So now if I simply don't press hard, we're gonna have less of an effect. The harder I press, the more effect we're gonna have. Let's go ahead and undo that. I'm also gonna bring in a little bit of shape dynamics. We're gonna bring our size control to pen pressure and I'm gonna bring my minimum diameter up. So if I press harder, my brush is gonna get a little bit larger and more opaque, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and start painting in now and see what a difference we can make with our image. There we go. And notice I'm still changing my brush size to be about the size that I need for these different areas. But as I paint on different areas of my subject, I'm able to have a different dodge and burn effect. So we're gonna focus on our subject's arm. In this case, we're gonna bring our brightness down just a little bit. There we go. I'm just gonna focus on my subject's arm for now. But here you can see there's a before and after. All right, let's go ahead and paint black over top of the sleeves. And we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer, just make it a little bit darker now. Let's invert that and then paint white towards the outside of his arms. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna make the arms look a bit more three-dimensional. There we are, while giving me complete control over dodging and burning. So. As I turn these both off and back on, you can see I've added a lot of dimension here. Make that a little bit less bright. We've added a lot of dimension and the arms look three dimensional. And of course you can apply this exact same technique to your entire photo. We're just getting through these fast. So I'm just gonna do the arms for now. We have an entire free tutorial on dodging and burning with the Wagam tablet. Click right up there. Now, before we get into our final two, I got a question for you. What is your favorite use for a Wacom tablet? I gotta say, I think mine is frequency separation retouching, which we're about to get into. Leave a comment right down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And now it's time to make some snow. Now we're still using just a standard brush here. We're gonna go into our brush settings, turn on scattering to start with. We wanna turn that way up along with both axes. Here in our brush tip shape, we're gonna bring our hardness up to about 60 to 70% and bring our spacing up. Now I wanna turn transfer on here as well. We're gonna bring opacity jitter, so some of these will be more and less visible. And then we're gonna go into our shape dynamics and turn our size jitter up with our control set to pen pressure. So now if I don't press hard, we're gonna be able to make small little snowflakes. Let's go ahead and close that up and start off by make, just making small, small snowflakes. We wanna make sure we have enough here in the background to kind of like fill this out a little bit. And I'm really just like, this is all one brush stroke basically, just pressing harder and softer for different variation. So I'm pressing relatively soft now. There we go. Let's go ahead and start pressing a little bit harder here. 
and we're going to see the size is going to get just a little bit larger. So we're creating depth while we paint. Some of these are going to be closer to the camera, some are going to be farther away. Okay, now I want to go ahead and introduce a blur. We're going to use a cool blur called a path blur. We're going to go to filter, down to blur gallery, and over to path blur. And this allows me to create a blur really just like along a line here. So much like we use with the rain, which we use just a regular motion blur. Now I'm able to add points to my path. There we go. Let's go ahead and add a point there and give it a little bit more of a unique shape. And it's just going to help add a little bit of variety in it to it, make it re look realistic. Now, my suggestion here would be to do this over a couple of different layers. To save time, we're just going to do it on one. Fantastic. So let's hit OK there. It just takes a second to apply. And basically, it applies a blur along the path that we make. So this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger. Again, we're just going to change our blend mode from normal down to screen. And here we want to create some larger snowflakes in our foreground. Some to cover up our subject. And there we go. We're looking fantastic. I think it looks great. Now you can always erase, like if you're like, ah, I don't want that one above our subject's face, you can always erase that away. I kind of like that one. I thought that looked kind of good there. And you can give it a little bit of variation. I'm just doing this with the eraser tool. Just hit E for the eraser tool, add some variation, and you're good to go. So we're going to make just a couple more of these, change our blend mode from normal to screen. All right, and there we go. Now I can apply similar blurs to these. We're going to go to filter. We're going to go to blur gallery and over to path blur once more. And we're going to go ahead and blur along a similar path. I don't want it to be the exact same. We're going to go ahead and use a similar path now. There we are. And I can choose the speed of my blur here. Fantastic. Let's hit OK. I think this is looking really nice. And there we have our snow effect. Now, this last case I think is my personal favorite. This is using frequency separation to smooth out skin. We actually made a frequency separation action to make it much easier. So if you want to download that for free, go ahead and click right down below. So back in Photoshop, I went ahead and applied my frequency separation, which separates our texture out from the color. Now, in between these two layers, we're going to use our brush tool. Let's go ahead and open up our brush settings. I want to turn on transfer and I'm going to turn my flow jitter onto pen pressure. That way, if I press hard, I'm going to have more ink. And if I don't press hard, it's going to have less ink. And we want to go ahead and turn our shape dynamics on pen pressure and our minimum diameter up to about 33%. And of course, we're going to give you this brush as well. So what this does is it allows me to create very smooth, even transitions. I just use my brush tool and I hold alt or option to sample the area right next to it and then just start painting right over top of the area that I want to work with. There we go. And as I paint there, you're going to see those areas are simply taken care of. I'm able to very quickly and easily smooth out my subject's skin. We're going to move right over here to our subject's cheek. There we go. Fantastic. A little bit of a dark area there. We'll just move that right out there. Smooth all this stuff out. And obviously, I'm going pretty quick here because this is a little bit of a highlight reel. But I just want to make sure that you know all of the amazing things that you can do with these brushes. I'm just going to kind of smooth out these areas as well. There we go. And then on this layer, we're just going to use our clone stamp tool, sampling the current layer. And we're just going to take the texture from over here and replace this right over there. Fantastic. So zooming in, we can see still have all the texture of our image. We we're able to take care of these little areas very quickly and easily by using my custom brush. I think that looks fantastic. There's the before and the after in almost no time. And that's it for my top five. We have our rain effect. We have our snow effect. We did dodge and burning, object removal, and frequency separation, all using special abilities with the Wacom tablet. Now, don't forget, you can download all of these brushes we made. Just click on the link right down below. 
If you want to get a free tutorial every single week on YouTube, subscribe to our channel by clicking right up here. YouTube thinks you're going to love this video. And if you want to learn more advanced Photoshop, check out Boom Flurn Pro. Thank you so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.